see a parable about like, farming or gardening. Now, I'm going to be the first one to tell you I don't know very much about gardening or farming. Uh, I do like to eat what's grown, so I kind of have a kinship to it, but I don't know much about it. But so I know that a lot of you here garden or farm, whichever one you want to call it. I guess that depends on the size of the garden, I guess. But because um, I've eaten some of your, your product, and it's good. Now, who here knows something about gardening? Yeah, I got one too. Almost the whole church knows something about gardening. That's good, because I need y'all to keep me straight here for the next five minutes. Now, I'm going to go over a couple things, and I want you to tell me if I make a mistake. Okay? Can you do that? Y'all love to do that anyway, but, but, but just, just let me know if I make a mistake. Now, one of the things you need for to, to have a good garden is you need good soil. Is that right? Yeah, right. right. Okay, I'm good. You need good soil. And at some point, you're probably going to have to do something to that soil. You're going to have to turn it over. You're going to have to break it up, plow it, whatever. Is that yeah, yeah. good? Good. I'm on the right track. And you're going to need the right seed. Is that right? You're going to need the right seed. You don't plant uh, you don't plant watermelon and expect a cucumber to grow, right? <laughs> Is that right? Am I, am I good? Sometimes it happens. Sometimes, sometimes it happens, but that's not the intent, right? That's not the intent. Okay. And at some point, you're going to have to, uh, of course, plant the seed. You're going to have to, you're going to have to take care of that seed, right? You're going to have to water. If, 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 if not enough rain, you're going to have to find some way, a sprinkler or something, to to get water to it so it grow, right? You're going to need to take care of the weeds, right? You're going to need to care for it, right? So it requires a little bit of work. And then at some point, at some point, you're going to have to go out there and harvest. Is that right? Yeah. You gotta fertilize. He needs fertilizer. Fertilizer. Okay. I'll write that down. So I can miss it next time. Fer we need fertilizer, right? So we need to fertilize it sometime to help it grow, right? Right. Okay. What else did I miss? That's it. That's, That's it? it? I did pretty good then. I'm, I'm ready to go grow something. Got to cook it and eat it. Yeah. Water. Yeah, you got to have water. Then you need to bag it up don't you? and bring it to the pasture. Yeah. Before that, you got to pray about it. Got to pray about it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you, if I was gardening something, I'd be definitely be praying about it. <laughs> the, uh, we don't have any green thumbs at our house, I can tell you that. But today, of course, is a, is a parable that Jesus tells. Not only does he tell it, he tells you what it's about, right? Which is very unusual for a parable, right? And Jesus, most of the time, people are sitting there trying to figure out what it's about and what are they supposed to do with it. <laughs> but Jesus talks to him. He talks about basically the relationship of the word to a person's what? Heart, right? He talks about, and he uses the analogy of a farm. A farmer sowing seed. And they didn't, you know, they didn't, they didn't, uh, excuse me, they didn't uh, farm like you do today. They, they didn't break up. They just threw seed. They threw it out. And they threw it generously so it would grow. And some of it lands on the path. In other words, it's going to be walked on and the birds are going to come and get it because it's not in the garden itself, but it's going to spill up. Okay? And sometimes they throw it in on rocky soil. It's, you know, it's not good soil. And some of it actually makes it where it's supposed to be, right? But it grows up and the weeds come and, and, and choke it out. And some of it grows, it's on good soil, it's deep rooted, and it's able to, be, to grow and be harvested. And all these represent a type of, of heart that we have. And, you know, we all um, have a different heart for the Word, and we have received it in different ways. And some of us, at some point or another, have been like, the person with a hard heart. Maybe when you were young, and you know, you came to church, but and you sat in the pew and you heard the sermon, but it kind of went just bounced right out of your out of your head or went straight through, or you tried not to let it interfere with your doodling on the on the bulletin, you know, stuff like that. We kind of had an over I call a hard heart as an overexposure to the truth and an under response. In other words, you hear the truth, you hear the word. But you don't really let it sink in. And that's what he's talking about, a hard heart. 
Now, some of us have had a hard heart. I hope none of you have a hard heart right now. But if, if you do, that's something you need to reflect on. And then he talks about uh, another heart where the where it's thrown in and the weeds come up, right? The weeds of life. People receive the word and they're joyful about it, and, and they're 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 new Christians, and they and then but then the things of the world come up, right? And they kind of choke it out of it, right? Pursuit of money and 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 things like that get more important than coming to church, or or ball games get more important than coming to church, or things get more important than, than spending time in Bible study or spending time in worship, glorify God. So, so those are the people that, the, the type of hearts that, what? That the world kind of chokes out, right? And then you have the ones that are on thin soil, rocky soil, right? And those people, those people are rooted but not very deep. You know, they're, they're, they're what I call superficial Christians. They don't have a deep faith, but they they come forward at some point, but they don't even, sometimes, sometimes the light goes out. Sometimes, <laughs> I don't know what that, but, but I'm going to yell. Can I yell? Can you still hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me in the back? Okay, I'm going to yell. Excuse so, me. Um, the, uh, give me the there we go. So sometimes, where was it? The soil, kind of shallow, right? So, so at that point, when something bad comes along, when somebody is, is persecuting them because of what they believe, making fun of, you know, they kind of shy away from it. They kind of hide their faith because they're ashamed of it. They don't really even know enough to defend what they believe, right? That's the people with the shallow roots. But then he talks about what? He talks about folks that have good soil. And they're ready and they receive the word. And it's deep rooted and they can defend what they believe, right? And it says that it goes forward and it produces a bumper crop, right? Right. Much more than what's right there. Now, how many of you have heard that sermon before? If you've been in church, right? right. If you've been in church, that's, that's the sermon you've heard, and that's all correct. Every bit of it. And this is the part where the pastor says, Now, which heart do you have? Right? You've heard that question too, right? And, and, and that you need to go and you need to reflect and you need to find out which heart you have. And if it's not that good soil, you need to add some fertilizer or some water or some, right? You need to change to be productive soil, right? You heard that before? Some, no, that's something new. Oh, some of you have. Okay, so that's normally the way that sermon goes. But I think there's more to it. I think there's a little more to it. You see, Jesus is talking to who? He's talking to the people, but He's talking to His followers. He's talking to His disciples. And He's talking to them about soil. And at the end, He talks about that good soil that's going to produce what? A bump of crop, right? It's going to produce, it's going to produce <coughs> fruit, right? And to do that, you're going to have to grow other Christians, aren't you? You're going to have to go out and spread the word. Those fans are starving. Stop. See the fans because I know y'all are going to sleep. And I don't have that much time. I'm almost done. So keep the fans going. God. Okay. Now, with that being said, it's our responsibility to what? To have a deep enough faith to be able to go out and explain it to people. Do you have that kind of soil? Do you have that kind of faith? Can you defend what you believe? And that's a good question for Christians today because a lot of Christians cannot defend what they believe. They just say, I believe. And that's good too. And I'm glad you believe it. But there's all kinds of ways to help those other seeds that landed in the wrong area or in the wrong section of their life, wrong, wrong type of soil. And some of us can be done with kindness. Some of us can be done with explanation. Sometimes, sometimes it takes a while. How many times did you have to sit in church before one Sunday you're like, aha, I get it. Right? A long time. Long time. A lot of sermons, right? And those sermons were doing what? They have planted a seed. They have watered the seed. They have fertilized the seed. They were 
they were pulling back the the, uh, the weeds so it wouldn't choke them out. They were preparing for that day that we would see a what? Finished product or, or at least have good soil and somebody who's deep-rooted in Christianity and in their faith, right? So all those sermons, all those things were, were working in that direction. And sometimes it's not sermons. Sometimes it's mom pulling on your ear. Right? Sometimes it's mom or dad saying this is this is church. Church isn't the only place you learn about Christianity. It should be taught in the homes. That's for amen would be good for that. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. It should start in the homes, and it should start by a parent's example of what it's like to live a Christian life. Amen? Amen. The church is just something you come to and you hopefully get fed a little bit, get watered a little bit to help you grow in your faith. Okay? But it's up to you to go out and extend Christianity to other folks. You see? That's what it means to have a bumper crop. Sometimes we got to explain it to people. we got to be patient. There's a story that was told. It's an old Native American story about a possum who came upon a raccoon who had this marvelous garden. And he said, man, I really love your garden. I'd like to have one. He said, well, you can do it. He said, you can do it. Here's, I'll give you the seed and you can go home and you can plant it. And it's a lot of hard work though if you want it. He said, I'm, I'm ready for the hard work. I can do that. I can do that just to have a garden like that. He said, well, here's the seed and, and you go on with yourself and, and you do it. And the possum went home and he, he, Toiled the soil and he threw out the seed and planted the seed and he watered it. He came up, went inside, he was tired, had a meal, went to bed, woke up the next morning, went outside, nothing. <laughs> there wasn't even a little sprout, nothing. <laughs> and he got mad and he started yelling, grow, plant, grow, plant. And, and he caused such a commotion, the other animals came over and trying to figure out what he was doing and he was still screaming and yelling at those plants to grow and to grow and, and finally the raccoon came over and said what are you doing he said he said i'm i'm growing these plants i plant them just like you said i water them just like you said and i came out here and there's nothing there he said well it's going to take some time it's going to take some patience it's going to take some patience it's going to take some hard work you see. And, and, and that's what he did. And he watered them. And he weeded them. And still nothing. And then one day he came outside and there was these little bitty shoots of, of green. You see, when you're growing Christians, there's something you, you need to understand. Is that the life is in the seed. Life is in the sea. The life is in God's Word. That's what you're trying to get across to people. That's what you're trying to have them understand. And why is that so important? I'll wait. Because they're going to need to read it again and again. Because all of us eventually become the seed that's on the rock. That's right. There's, there's, there's times they're gonna, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to be patient, aren't you? And you're gonna be patient with that person, aren't you? Amen. How many of you have tried to share your faith with somebody over and over and over again? They just not into it. They don't want to hear about it. Then, but then comes an emergency and just the right opportunity, and they're down and they're beaten up, and you come to them and say, you know, I just put my arm around you, can I just give you a hug? You know, if you need something. You, you know, you develop that relationship with people, and that opens the door for them to hear what you have to say. You know, people don't care about what you know till they know you care. That's a fact. That's a fact. I can preach, and you can say, well, you can preach out of that Bible, and you can say it's true, but as somebody who doesn't believe, this is just a book. I mean, it is. But when they know you care, they know the changes that this, this book, this word, from God has made in your life and how it's changed you over the years and how it's created a loving person. 
a caring person. When we reflect that example that Christ set for us to the world, it changes the world even if you don't see the finished product. I've preached a lot of sermons. Some of them I even think were good sermons. And, and, and I preached sermons in a church, my last church, and I preached for two and a half years, and there was one guy and every week I just looked at him. I just knew he was going to come forward. It's like, please come forward. I'm just, I mean, I really, and, and uh, I had a funeral to go to, and I had a week off, and he came forward. So I, was out of town. I rejoice in him coming forward. You know, I hope I was the one who was watering that plant, who was weeding that plant. And I don't care who sows it. I mean, I don't care who, who harvests it. Because it's a harvest for the kingdom. It's not about me. There's life in the sea. It's not about me. Amen? Amen. And we never know what kind of change we made. There's a story of a gentleman. His name, he went to church. And he was old. How many can relate to that? You know, <laughs> yeah. you know what Pam said? That hearing test? I aged out at 84. Okay. So, so... Definitely feeling some age, but he had outlived most of his friends. He had outlived them, and so he didn't have a lot of friends, but he came to church every Sunday, and old Thomas passed. And uh, he had one guy who, who kind of had talked to him and you know, during on church on Sundays and stuff. He said, Yeah, I'm gonna go to his funeral because there's probably not gonna be any many people there. And that's which is the case with a lot of folks who get who outlive their friends a lot of times. So anyway, he went and he was the only one there. He was the only person at the funeral. And the funeral proceeded and the sermon was preached and the words were said and they proceeded out to the cemetery. But when they got to the cemetery, there was a, there was a gentleman there who was obviously an officer in the, in the, in the military. And, and that he, he stood there and, excuse me, he, he stood there and he, uh, listen to the funeral. And as the funeral, the words were said, he walked up to the casket and he gave it a salute. And it had started to rain and him and that gentleman started walking towards the gate. He said, you know, you're probably wondering why I'm here. He said, about that time the wind whipped open his coat, you could see all these medals. He was a brigadier general. And he said, you could, you, could, uh, you could see he was a man of importance. And he said, I bet you're wondering why I'm here. Yeah, I kind of wonder. He said, a long time ago, Thomas taught my Sunday school. He said, and I was kind of a wild buck back then. He said, I was always in the trouble. But he kind of helped steer me on the right path. As a matter of fact, I'd say everything I am today, I owe to him. He said, I never told him that. But today I came to give him the salute that he deserved. You see, sometimes you're going to change a young person's life or a middle-aged person's life or somebody's life who needs to hear the Word, needs some kindness, needs some forgiveness, needs something from you that you have to offer. And you're going to encounter them and you can change their life. You can change their life for good. And you can change their life for bad. Words have power, don't they? Don't they? words of the gospel have power. They are the seed. And there's life in the seed. So as Jesus tells you to sow it generously, to throw it in places you may not think it'll grow, throw it anyway. <laughs> if there's rocks there, throw it anyway. Regardless of what soil you encounter, throw it anyway. world is your mission field, or your garden, or your farm, and whatever you do as you go through life, make sure you throw that seed. Throw it to the left, throw it to the right, throw it over your head if you want, throw it behind, in front of you. No matter where you are, what you're doing, always throw that seed. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen probably never been